Hey, welcome to the underground, you rebel scum. This is the American Expat. I'm going to keep uh, introductions short here because I want to get right to the point. Is it possible for the United States to be invaded? You'll have to excuse me. I'm not uh, used to making this kind of a presentation. If I had to go and present this information to, uh, let's say, someone important, I would probably completely blow it. I'm, I'm better if I'm just sitting in a room with people that already have a good understanding of the, uh, the premise, I guess you would say, of what I'm about to talk about. But uh, hopefully, as I go through this, it'll make sense to you. Uh, if you've asked yourself the same question, is it possible that the United States could be invaded? Or if you're looking at situations online and you're saying to yourself, you know, I think it is being invaded. Or even if you're a skeptic and you're saying, there's no way that this could happen. I think that this is important to talk about. The first thing I want to get at is, is there a reason that anyone would be interested in invading the United States? The United States is a very powerful country, militarily speaking. There's a lot of risk there that the United States would just smash the invading country into oblivion with its military for even attempting. So it would take some pretty desperate reasons to be able to do that. Looking around the world right now, are there countries that are in desperate situations that feel like the United States is the oppressor, I guess in their particular case, that's keeping them from achieving their goals? Or continuing to exist? I would say the answer is definitely yes. One obvious example is Russia right now making its efforts over in Ukraine. The Western world has kind of joined together in trying to crush the regime that is in Russia. They're not so interested in what's happening in Ukraine and their interest is more in what's happening in Russia and crushing that regime. Of course, that's my personal opinion, but I, I'm sure that Putin and his people probably feel the same way, that their very existence, their continuance as a government, as a state, are probably at risk. I think another example is China. Right now, they're experiencing some serious economic hardships, and it's becoming harder and harder for their government to keep that situation under control. Maybe they have some reason to believe that there could be some changes coming in their country and their government if they can't do something drastic right now. Another example, I guess you could say Iran. I, the list could go on and on of countries that feel threatened, that their very existence, their, the governments anyway, is at risk. And the thing that is causing the greatest risk, the thing that is the one country or power that they cannot expand or continue to exist as long as their efforts and their power remains is the United States. I mean, if uh, let's face it, the, uh, the European nations on their own probably aren't enough to be able to do anything about an Iran becoming, you know, belligerent or expanding its interests, or China or Russia or any of those. They would all fall into serious problems if the United States wasn't there backing them up. Just look at the amount of money that's being sent into Ukraine from the United States. That country would not exist right now probably if not for that effort if you want to call it that. I know a lot of American people are very much against that, but uh, we're not talking about that right now. So the motivation is definitely there. There are definitely groups, countries, uh, governments that feel that their very existence is being threatened by the United States. And their, uh, their situation is becoming more and more desperate. So yes, I believe they would act in this way. Then you, you run into this thing. We just mentioned a little bit ago that the United States is kind of isolated. You have the oceans on either side, and uh, I guess our neighbors to the north and south are probably not so interested in making an invasion themselves. So you, you kind of feel complacent, like the, uh, the troubles are happening far away. How would you get troops into the United States? Can you get troops? Can you get them into the country? Um, ask yourself that question right now. Is there a weakness in our border somewhere uh, in the United States where they could land troops, where they could get people into the country? And I think that you would have to agree the answer is yes. Our situation on the southern border, uh, with it being wide open, is, I mean, obviously that's a major weakness where anyone can get as many troops in as they want. And that's where a lot of the rumors online have been coming from. They've noticed certain groups of people being brought in. I'm not going to get into that part. Definitely the weakness exists. So yes, they could get troops into the country. Let's say you've managed to get your troops enough for whatever purpose that it is that you're trying to achieve. You've gotten them into the country. Now, what is to stop the United States? Once you actually execute your plan and start doing whatever destruction in the country, what is to stop the United States from making a devastating 
attack. Like I said, the United States, uh, if somebody invaded, is likely to just absolutely destroy whatever country it is because we are so powerful militarily. You have to ask yourself, how can you prevent the United States from making that devastating attack? You would probably want to get corrupt or ideologically supportive people into key positions in the government. If there's a fire, let's say, you've got a fire in your house or, you, you know, somebody's attacking you and you call the police, then they can respond, right? But what if there's no one to send that message to the police? You're calling the police and the message doesn't get through. I'm not talking about taking out communications right now. I'm just saying, you know, what if the people in charge of telling the police, hey, go to this location and uh, deal with this problem, they just turn a blind eye? What if they are ideologically supportive of the people that are, you know, doing the attack, the police aren't going to come if nobody tells them to come. So you're going to be in big trouble. You're going to be being attacked and nobody's coming. The same thing if you have these people in the government who are ideologically supportive or who have uh, turned a blind eye because of major corruption. Let's say an invasion starts taking place. The, uh, the, the soldiers or whatever you've gotten into the country start doing their damage. You're like, hey, this is happening. And the people in the government just like, nah, whatever. Nah, the message just doesn't get through. I, I'm sure that there would be some kind of response. It would be disorganized because there'd be no coordination. There'd be nobody telling people what to do. And ask yourself this question. Is there major corruption in the United States government right now? Are there major corrupt people in key positions in government right now as we speak? This isn't about Republican, Democrat, conservative, uh, liberal, or whatever. Just ask yourself that. Is there major corruption in the government right now? Are there people that would take money and do whatever? Turn a blind eye. Then I want to uh, point your attention at our current administration. Do you believe, first of all, that Joe Biden is actually in control of the government, that he's actually working as the executive to do anything? Who is really in charge? And those people, do you believe that there could be communists or other ideological people, I guess, within the government who maybe hate the United States? Do you think that there are some of those people in there? Because I do. Just ask yourself, are there people, let's say uh, China, for example, a communist state and uh, communists being interested in the spread of communism globally? What if they came in and they had people in the government in key positions who are ideologically supportive of their efforts? Would you say there are some people like that in the government right now? I think that the answer is probably yes. The next thing that I would do is sow chaos within the country. Just absolutely destroy morale, make people question everything so that the parts of the government who would be responsible for repelling an invasion or doing things, you'd have people questioning everything that they say, everything that they do, even the media, for example, so that if the media is reporting something, you have people that are like, I don't think so, just questioning everything. I don't know if we've reached the point now where if the mainstream media were to report that the United States is being invaded or this is happening, that people would question it. I'm sure there are people who would, who would say, that, oh, it's a false flag or something like that. That's exactly the kind of thing you would do if you wanted to have an invasion. Now that we've answered some of these questions, we've established you've, you're able to get your troops into the country, into the United States. You have people in positions in the government and key positions either through ideological support or just flat-out corruption, who are willing to either turn a blind eye or facilitate or help uh, efforts to make sure that there's no coordinated uh, effort to repel the invasion. Now, what about the logistics of your invasion? What would you need to do to be able to facilitate that? You would need detailed information about topography, where all the roads are, where uh, strategic assets are located, and how strong they are, that sort of information, if you were going to have an effective invasion of the United States. So you'd know where to attack strategically. You'd need to probe to see what parts of the grid are the weak points. Then you would have all that information. Well, we, we've has something like that happened in recent times? I'm reminded of the Chinese spy balloon, for example, that flew over the country. This is another example of the corruption in the government just turning a blind eye, allowing this... Uh, whatever it was, to fly all the way over the country and get detailed information about us, where things are. Could they have that? Could they? What about through any, I mean, people joke around about cell phones and all of this stuff, uh, camera technology, sending information back, 5G stuff. Yeah, I mean, that's a real possibility that they could have gathered very detailed 
up-to-date information about our country to be able to plan out what they were going to do, where to attack, and when exactly what to do. So, yeah, all of that is, has happened. It, it's uh, Again, I'm, I'm sorry about the, uh, the way that I'm presenting this. I'm not very good at this kind of a presentation. But I think that if you ask yourself, is it possible that this has happened? You would have to say, yes, this uh, absolutely has happened. So what about in the execution of this said invasion, this uh, hypothetical invasion that could take place? I think the very first thing you would do is take out communications. Um, you know, I'm reminded again of uh, waking up today and seeing that the cell networks were all going down all over the place, internet problems, that sort of thing. That's exactly what you would do. You would take down those communications in the areas where you're going to be uh, doing stuff, I guess, with your soldiers, your activities, so that uh, there would be confusion. No one would know exactly what was going on. They wouldn't be able to spread that information on social media, through cell networks. It would be chaos. Hopefully the government would... Uh, you know, be in a position to be able to do something. But then again, I don't know. There would be a lot of confusion. Um, absolutely, they could. And we've seen that proven today that people had their cell networks taken down and that sort of thing. It would just, uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm looking at all of this. Um, I would also expect that they would spread enormous amounts of disinformation on the internet. Uh, let's say you're on Twitter and they know exa they already have this in place as well. How much? How what percentage of people on X, for example, or Facebook or whatever, are actually real people, and how many of them are bots? So you're trying to send the word out. Hey, there's like soldiers from whatever country, or people blowing this stuff up. They know how to target it and just flood any sort of, you know, trending thing or whatever with a bunch of random stuff in order to make sure that that gets buried so that nobody knows what's going on. They can spread all kinds of misinformation that way. They've done it many, many times. The Chinese government does it right now. Whenever something bad comes out about the Chinese government, they flood social media with all of this garbage stuff that uh, is completely unrelated to whatever it is that's happening. But uh, because of the way they post, the words that they use and whatnot, it just fills it up so that you never see the bad stuff. You just see all of the, you know, random garbage that's not related so that no one ever hears about it. Yeah, they could do that. There's a lot of things that they could do. I'm sure there, there are people who watch this channel sometimes who have... Uh, better knowledge when it comes to military stuff uh, and this kind of thing than I do. I would be curious what they have to say um, about this, but really be asking yourself, do you think it's possible? Do you think that this could be happening? It could be happening right now. I'm telling you right now, this this could happen. It could be happening right now. And there, there are countries that have the motive. They have the opportunity. And uh, yeah, it could be happening right now. So ask yourself, when you hear these rumors about the southern border and the, the people that are coming across, do you think it's possible? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave it there. Uh, this will be a pretty weird uh, video. I'm going to have to cut some things out because uh, you, you won't see those things that I cut out. But, um, yeah, let me know what you think. I, I feel like uh, we're in big, big trouble. And I don't... Uh, I don't feel like the government, as it exists right now, is going to do anything about it to, to help us. It's, it's terrible. It could be happening right now. I'll leave it there. We'll see you guys in the next one.